I'm Laird Hayes, and uh, I have a couple of jobs. One of them, a lot of people think would be kind of a pretty cool job to have, and I'm a football official in the National Football League. I'm a side judge. Well, Monica, I started officiating intramural basketball when I was an undergraduate at Princeton. Uh, to make some extra money and I played baseball so it was a way to kind of stay in some sort of decent physical shape during the winter time because baseball is a spring sport and I liked it and then when I went to graduate school at UCLA my dad suggested that I might consider officiating high school basketball so I thought that'd be kind of fun so I joined the Los Angeles High School Basketball Officials Association and got some frost soft games, JV games and I did pretty well and the next year got some varsity games, then I started baseball umpiring. I loved school, but I kind of like playing around more. So I did my baseball umpiring and did pretty well in that, and then I got hired at Orange Coast College after I finished my master's, my doctorate at UCLA. And I always thought football would be the most fun, being outdoors. I'm not a real indoors guy, and basketball's an indoor sport. Baseball games just got longer and longer and longer. Uh, it's the only one of the few sports where, I guess cricket's another one, where it's not a time sport, it's the number of outs. And so baseball games can go on forever. So when I moved to Orange County, I joined the Orange County Football Officials Association and started doing frost soft and JV football games. And that was back in 1976. In 1983, I was accepted to the Pacific 10 Conference. Now it's the Pacific 12. Uh, and uh, then in 1995, I got hired by the NFL. They start scouting you, and I expressed an interest, and a buddy of mine said I ought to apply to the NFL, and I, I got hired. And here I am, 18 years later, uh, I'm still doing it, and hope to go a couple more years as long if, if my <laughs> physical ability can, and my mental too, can handle it. <laughs> I guess I wanted to be a lawyer. I don't know why. I like Perry Mason. I don't know if you know that show, but it was a real popular show uh, when I was a kid. Uh, but that would not have been the right job for me. My two older brothers became lawyers. <clears throat> so I, I really wasn't thinking about what I wanted to be when I grew up. I just figured that I'd end up doing something I liked and that was fun. <laughs> Probably just the self-confidence, can I do it at every step of the way from when I first started doing intramural basketball at Princeton and intramural basketball at UCLA when I, where I was in graduate school and then the high school and then the junior college and small college. I never knew if I could do it. And you don't know when you move up to the next level. And But you just kind of figure out how to get it done. I had some great mentors. I couldn't have done it myself every step of the way from when I first started all the way to the NFL and I still have mentors in the NFL. I mean I've been doing it a long time but every game I learned some new things. This last game there are two or three things that have never happened before and I've never quite seen it like that and that's what's really fun about officiating is no two games are alike, no two plays are exactly alike and you've got to think pretty quickly on your feet. You can learn the rules, you can go through all the different plays but there's always there are always things that pop up that you go, holy smokes, what do I do now? And you've got to kind of sort the whole thing out. Uh, applying the rules, you just don't make up rules, but <laughs> you just have to kind of call upon your experience and what people have taught you along the way to make the right decision. Oh, not a, in a heartbeat. I've been so lucky. I mean, everything from the football officiating to Orange Coast College, which I just loved. I can't get, get away from the Orange Coast College experience. I'm still teaching the surfing class. Uh, every once, every, occasionally I'll teach a first aid CPR class when they need me. So I just love teaching and being around students. Uh, and, and that's great. And then being on a professional football field on Sundays and then teaching high school and junior high school and high school age quarterbacks and receivers how to get better. I mean, there's nothing more gratifying than that. So I wouldn't ever change what I've done and am doing for anything. The favorite part of my job is <clears throat> the challenge of getting it right. That really, and then getting it right. So I was lucky enough to officiate in the Super Bowl 
in February of 2012. And there was a play towards the end of the game that was a huge play. And I got it right. And it was a critical play. And I could have just as easily got it wrong. But luckily, that play just went in slow motion in my brain. And I got it right. And I've gotten a lot of accolades, some notoriety. And people remember that play because it was significant. But I could have gotten it wrong. And then I would have been, well, you're the guy that missed that play. So. Being, being able to make a tough decision and get it done properly uh, is because you got, you got to do that a lot of times in a football game and you never know when it's going to come up. It's just all of a sudden there it is, boom, and you better be ready and prepared. When you're given an opportunity like that, you, you want to just make the most of it and continue to learn. To me, you just never stop learning. I'm 63 now and I just love the fact that there's always new things that I can learn to be better at what I do. And in addition to that, I teach a surfing class down at uh, Newport Beach Pier uh, for Orange Coast College. And then in the summertime, I have quarterback and receiver camps all over the country for sixth graders all the way through seniors in high school. So those are kind of my, my three jobs for a long time, 35 years. I was a full-time faculty member and soccer coach at Orange Coast College. Yes, I played football, basketball, and baseball, and I was average at all of them. I mean, I was pretty good, but I was never the star, but I loved playing sports. Baseball was probably my best sport, um, but I never, I started my senior year in college, uh, but there were always guys that were a little bit better than me, but that was okay. It taught me humility, and I thought I was pretty tough stuff in high school because I, I was pretty good there, but, you know, that pyramid goes like that, and people get better and better and better. Well, I went to Princeton as an undergraduate, that's back in New Jersey, and then I went to graduate school at UCLA. I got a teaching credential, and I got my master's and my doctorate in higher education administration. It just bugged me. <laughs> um, we figured, well, eventually it was going to end. The difference between a lockout and a strike is the league locks you out because you have not agreed to the contract that they offered. And the contract they offered us was less than our last contract, which was, which uh, we agreed upon back in 2006. So we didn't quite understand why they, we should be making less money. And so that's why we didn't accept the deal. And they hired these replacements who were totally unqualified, and we knew eventually there was just going to be a, tra it was a train wreck every week. But the NFL is pretty good at kind of not pointing out the mistakes the other guys were making. Although they're real good at pointing out mistakes the full-time guys make when we make them. Uh, but I, you know, it wasn't a money deal with me that I'm not working so I can't pay the bills. Uh, I've never relied on my officiating income from that. But uh, the thing that bothered me was the disrespect that the NFL showed to us. They said some things that were just... Uh, uh, not not good, not right. Uh, very demeaning and insulting towards us, their employees. But I'm so proud of our group of 121 officials, and we hung together, and we knew eventually they would realize that we're pretty good at what we do, and it's managing the game. And when I came back for my first game after we agreed to the new deal, I had Tennessee at Houston, and the players and the coaches, the fans, they were just going nuts. I was on the kiss cam. Uh, the mascot for the Houston's, it's a, a person dressed up in a kind of a bull outfit. And he came down, and I didn't know what he was doing. I feel a tap, so I turned and kind of hugs me, and I hug him back. And so it's up on the big board, and uh, fans went wild, and I waved and all that. So they got, we got a lot of love when we came back. They were happy to see us, which doesn't usually happen to referees, so that was good. Well... Yeah, I've got a lot of guys on the football field, uh, so just go through a whole bunch of NFL players. Um, but aside from that, because I'm on the field with them, so you get to see these guys all the time. Uh, but when I was a kid, uh, one of the Supreme Court justices, his name was William O. Douglas, was at a restaurant where my dad and I were having dinner, 
and I noticed him because I was always kind of a political geek, and he was on the cover of Life magazine, which was a big magazine that your, your dad would know of when I was a kid, and I read that kind of stuff, and I recognized him, and my dad said, I said, there's William O. Douglas, one of the justices for the United States Supreme Court. He said, go introduce yourself to him. And I said, what? He said, go and say hi. I said, no, what am I going to say? I'm like in sixth grade. And finally he made me. I went over there and probably made a fool out of myself. But that got me, he was very nice. He, he was there with his wife, and they were both just real charming and polite to a little sixth grade kid. And uh, from that point on, I realized that you can't be intimidated by anybody. Just go up and introduce yourself, and if they want to shine you on, they'll shine you on. And, but most people are just real gracious. And So, yeah, I've met you know, congressmen. And, have I ever met a president? I've never met a president. I've met a lot of senators. I was a page in the United States Senate when I was 14 years old, between 9th and 10th grade. So I met Teddy Kennedy and, and uh, just a whole lot of senators back in those days.